computers is just... Is her just going crazy and doing everything that you guys say that she shouldn't do? Yes, ma'am. Um, your stepmom is saying that she's here for you and that she loves you like her own. Um, and, of course, nobody can ever replace a true mom, and I understand that. But um, what makes you not feel that love and, 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 and accept that? Because that is rare for a stepmom to say that and to mean it. I see in her face she means it. She's not just saying it. It doesn't feel it because it's mom. Used to her, you know, smell, her skin. It's me. It's part of me. So it's, like, hard to call somebody else mom mm -hmm. and you don't have your real mom. Mm -hmm. You don't have to call her mom, though, because you have a mom, right? Yeah. Why are y'all laughing? <laughs> <laughs> But I think it, you know, sometimes it's not about the people that necessarily give birth to us that can be there for us. Your mom, she's, she's in jail, and I'm sure she's loving you, but she can't be there. And this beautiful woman is there right now and loves you so much. I don't know. I love her, too. But it's just, you know, it's mommy. How often do you get to see your mom in jail? I haven't seen her in five years. Really? Why not? It's hard. Well, she just moved to another place, so it's hard to travel and go back and forth up north, and it's just hard. Mm -hmm. So, Do you think if you were to see her that it would help, maybe, just to see her once? Yeah. Yeah? Maybe A that's lot. something you guys can figure out. It might be the beginning of something. And you know what? I'm going to get you a, um, some help in your town because I find, I don't know what you guys think, but I find you to be so aware of yourself. Psychotherapist Dr. Robbie Ludwig is with us today. Hi, Robbie. Hello there. Why do you think she's fighting? I have to say the fighting is a way for you to stay connected to your mom. Mm. And you are your mom's daughter. And it's because your mom going to jail really felt like a death, mother loss. So you need to maintain that umbilical cord, and this is the way you've done it, especially mm -hmm. since your mom's in jail. And I just want to say that you might have a talent that once you work out this pain, and also, you're not replacing your mom by allowing your stepmom to love you. Mm -hmm. You can never have too many people love you. Yep. You know, you really can't. There's, there's enough love to go around. You're not getting rid of your mother. So maybe in treatment, you'll give yourself permission to open up and allow people to be there and realize you will always be your mother's daughter. Mm -hmm. okay? Always. And one thing I want to tell you is you're a videographer in a, in a negative way. Yes. You know, and, and I think it's important to turn that around. If you like holding that camera, if you like having that power of pushing play and something happening, and then when you push the stop button, being in control, Look at all these cameramen in this room. All right, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven I mean, of I them. See, I see you really as being a future documentarian. Exactly. You know, somebody who can a lot of money. Yeah. And I don't know, Tyra. A lot of money. Tyra, maybe you can introduce her to some people that you know who are I successful in the field. I'm, I'm sure going to have you to talk to that cameraman at the break, okay? Mm -hmm. In fact, come with me. We'll be right back. Next, two girls in one vicious fight. What's it like living under house arrest? Do you have to wear like a bracelet on your ankle? Yeah. You I do? Have an ankle bracelet. And later, this teen attacks her own sister and posts the videos on the internet. If a person's on the ground getting hit more than the person on the top, then that's the person I want. It's not funny, it's, that's violent. <laughs> The number of teen girls arrested for aggravated assault has doubled. More and more, teen girls are resorting to violence to solve even the pettiest disputes with other girls. And then they broadcast their fights on the internet. This girl fight made headlines. And again, I have to warn you that the video is very disturbing. The two 15-year-old girls from that video are with us today. Uh, it looked like there were three of them to me, but there's two of them that are with us today. 
Um, but only one of them, Kayla, is in my studio because Erica's joining us via satellite since she's on house arrest because of what you just saw on that tape. Can you imagine that? A little teenage girl on house arrest. And a judge has ordered that since their situation is so volatile, Kayla and Erica cannot be in the same room or even talk to each other. So we're going to hear Erica's side of the story first. Um, so Erica, are you there? Yeah. You are there. Okay, so that video was really hard for, for me to watch. Um, were you the one doing the kicking? Yeah. You were doing the kicking. Okay. Do you know why you did that? Um, I did it because during the school year, uh, she said a lot of things that wasn't true. She talked about people. She lied. She talked about my family. She called my sister a whore. And I did it because I didn't think that was right. Okay, so if, if, if something happens that I do, am I supposed to fight people? No. No? Okay. Um, so tell me about when the detective came to your house that day. When the detective came to my house that day, he asked me to come outside. I didn't have shoes on, and he arrested me, saying that I was going to JDC, Juvenile Detention Center, for a night until my hearing the next day. And how long did you end up being in jail? Uh, 12 days. 12 days in jail. And how long is your house arrest? Two months. Two months. And how much community service do you have to do? Uh, 50 hours. 50 hours. Okay, what's it like it, living under house arrest? I can't leave unless if I'm approved by CCJ, Center for Community Justice. Um, I can't leave unless if I'm approved and I have a certain amount of time to be gone for and I have to be back by a certain time. Do you have to wear like a bracelet on your ankle or anything like that? Yeah. You I do? have an ankle bracelet. So it's, it, it's like you're a criminal. And, and how old are you? 15? Yeah. Do you regret what you did? <laughs> yeah, very much. Very much. How often do you fight? That was the first fight that I've been into. That was the first fight? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, you know, uh, to be honest, I mean, I had a fight. I remember my first and only fight was when I was, how old was I, 10 years old? And um, I got into really big trouble. But one thing that I, I saw with you, Erica, that kind of disturbed me was the kicking when she was on the, on the floor, on the ground. Mm -hmm. That's just not a girl fight when, you know, when you go like a cat and you go, hey, you know, that yeah. was really serious. That looked like an adult woman with hatred and anger inside of her kicking at this girl. What made you go that far to kick her when she was down, literally, when she's down? I didn't really think much because it happened at the spur of a moment. I didn't think much about kicking her, but I did it because, like, it was like a month before that. She wanted to fight me, and she said she couldn't because she was on probation. So I decided then, I guess, because since she could fight this other girl, why couldn't she fight me? Do you think you'll fight again? No. After being on house arrest, what do you think you'll do the next time somebody says something or calls one of your family members or friends a whore and says things just, that you don't like? Just walk away. You'll just walk away. Mm -hmm. Did you ever apologize to Kayla? Yeah. Now, Kayla can't talk right now, but um, I wish she could, but she can't because the judge says that she can't. I'm going to talk to her after we take a break. So you're saying that you did talk to Kayla? Yeah. Apologize to her? Mm-hmm. And that you guys were getting along after you apologized? Yeah. yeah. And then the police still came to get you? Yeah. Do you think that that tape had, any had anything to do with them coming to arrest you? Um, her mom pressed charges for them to do that. Her mom pressed charges. You know, you sound like a little girl to me. You sound like 11, not even I'm, 15. I'm 15. How old do you feel? Right now? Yeah. 15. <laughs> All right. Okay. We'll be right back. And when we come back, we're going to talk to 
Kayla, the girl that you were in a fight with. And I so wish that you guys can talk together at the same time. But again, we're respecting what the judge has ordered, that you guys cannot speak to each other. You cannot be in the same room. So I want to thank you for talking to us. And I really hope that you're listening to the counselors and all the help that you're getting. And I hope you understand how serious it is and that it was a crime, that what you did was a crime. No matter what made you do it, it's still a crime. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay. We'll be right back. Up next. Let's just stop. Let's just stop. Get off.